Are you sure that you're not a puppet created by your brother? <gasps> Were you ever even a real person to begin with? How can you ask something like that? What? Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's React. I'm Kenny and this is Montana. And today we're going to be reacting to season one, episode eight of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, The Fifth Laboratory. Trying to figure out how to say the name. Fifth. Oh yeah, because you don't say fifth. I say fifth. What is wrong with saying the fifth category? F-I-T-H, fifth. That's how you say it. The fifth lavatory. The fifth lavatory. Tell me, lavatory? <laughs> laboratory. Fifth. There you go. The fifth laboratory. Damn it. Anyway, Al was under attack. It seemed to have figured out that philosopher's stones are made by human sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Not ideal. Um, no. I'm interested to see kind of how they address this problem because I feel like there are like multiple strategies or like directions yeah. they could take. So I, I want to see, you know, what they end up doing. And I can't wait to see what's going on in the fifth laboratory. Um, <laughs> like, Damn. Comment. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below if you're excited for this episode and more moving forward. We're going to be releasing episodes every Thursday and Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you can't wait and want to see the next episode along with these episodes right now in their extended uncut forms, they're all posted to the Patreon linked in the description below right now. I think that's about it. Are we excited for season one, episode eight of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Absolutely. All right, let's get it. Let's go. Underheads, this video was brought to you by the incredible members of the Let's React Patreon. If you want access to a ton of exclusive perks, check out the link in the description below. Have a good day, Twinkle Toes. The fifth laboratory. Here you go. And who are, who are these people? You move pretty well for your size. If you didn't, though, it wouldn't be worth the effort to cut you down. Who are you? What? I'm number 66. Makes sense. Well, that's the name they gave me when I came to work here anyway. I'm going to cut you up nice Why are they and neat. numbered? All you have to do is sit back and scream! Why? Wait a minute. Shot in the dark. They haven't been transmuting prisoners into augmented, like, monsters. Oh, interesting. Because here's the thing. If they've been having this system running for a while, you'd think they probably would have already created a Philosopher's Stone. So they could just, then what are they doing with the prisoners from then on? Like, number 66 doesn't say, do is I, this is a short amount of Yeah, things. no, you're right. Up. Oh. Transmutation. Well, it's not a circle. It's like a pentagon. What is all this? I bet this is what they use to transmute a philosopher's stone. Yes, that's right. I don't know who you are, kid, but you sure figured out a lot just from looking at a transmutation circle. I'm just good like that. Who are you, pal? The one in charge of guarding this place from curious brats. For the moment, let's just say my name is number 48. And believe me, I'm not your pal. My orders are to dispose of anyone who wanders in here, poking his nose where it doesn't belong. Try not to take it personally, boy. All right, I won't. Oh, oof. You try not to take it personally when this boy kicks your ass. Hmm. You're an alchemist, are you? Oh. All right, then. Let's see what you got. That was pretty bad. <laughs> A prosthetic arm, huh? No, Let's hope the arm doesn't mess up from the missing the Yeah. True. That would be inconvenient. Yeah. <laughs> Losing your arm is big inconvenience. Wait. My, my, what's this? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say you're hollow inside. He's bonded to armor too? You're a deceptive one. I could tell from the sound. Like how? I spar against someone like you all the time. So there are people like me on the outside too, are there? That's surprising. <laughs> yeah, it Interesting. Sense. Are they sacrificing the bodies and keeping the souls in armor? So that they can make a Philosopher's Stone, but like not fully kill someone? Yeah, it seems like potentially what could be happening is the prisoners are like sent to execution, they're sacrificed, and then they're soul bonded to an armor set and given tasks like this. He's tasked with just guarding. Look, that, that's Al. That literally looks just like him. All right. I don't know. Could be interesting. Wow. You're hollow inside. You're a perceptive one. I could tell from the sound. I spar against someone like you all the time. So there are people like me on the outside too, are there? 
Mia's snorting. Yeah, to think there's more than one idiot in the world who came up with the brilliant idea of bonding. His eyes are kind of like yours. Mm. Mm. Oh, thank you. Perhaps I should introduce myself again. Forty-eight is the number I was assigned when I was on death row. Back when I still had a living body, I was better known as Slicer. I was a mass murderer, you see. So you were slated for execution. Tell me something then. This laboratory. Are they using condemned prisoners like you to make philosopher's stones here? That I can't tell you. It isn't my area. They simply recognized my skills, gave me this body, and made me their trusty guard dog. Interesting. I'm sure they gave you a seal, too, to serve as a medium between soul and armor? Yes. I have a blood seal. This is it right here. Hmm. If you destroy this, the fight's yours. That's awfully considerate of you to show me your weak spot. I like to give myself a little extra challenge during a fight now and then. Dang, this guy's well, confident. If you're in such a giving mood, then how about this? Why not just let me go? Nice try, kid. But what kind of mass murderer lets his prey get away so easily? <sighs> No, <laughs> At least he owns it, fight. but yikes. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> My dear little Alicia is about to turn three! <laughs> what is Lieutenant he doing? Hughes, do you think this could wait? I'm at work. Oh, what a coincidence. I'm at work too. She's the cutest little thing. What is he doing? I'm sure she's adorable, but stop calling me to gush over your daughter. And not a military It's gonna be me. Too. Not just my daughter, Colonel. I'll gush over my wife too. Me. <laughs> I know, I know. It's your turn now. Yeah, Go I could. Ahead, I could cosplay. I know That's you're dying to gush over your very own scar-faced Ishvalan. We found many bodies on the site where he vanished, but all of them are so decomposed that it's been difficult to identify them. Oof. <sighs> he hasn't been sighted anywhere in the east, so at the present, many people here think it's most likely that he's dead. If that's the case, I should be able to lift the bodyguard from the Elric brothers soon. Is Major Armstrong still in charge of the boys' protective detail? He was, but a couple of his men have taken over now. <laughs> We've been played! I thought it was suspiciously quiet in here. <laughs> <laughs> Major Armstrong's gonna take his shirt off again and yell at us some more! <laughs> These brats are going to pay. Did they even think See? about how this makes us look? Oh, okay. Let's go, Sergeant. Huh? Where? Where else do you think, Brosh? To the fifth laboratory. Pretty intense. Yeah, seriously. Oh, is that the broken sure bolt? Right. Oh. Gotta be. I increased the percentage of chrome, so it's less prone to rusting, but it's not as strong, so don't try anything crazy. I have to find a way to end this quickly. I'm dead. Yeah, because he can't, he can't use alchemy if he hurts his arm. Mm hmm Why isn't he using alchemy with my flash? Oh! Oh, that was his other arm. Oh. Getting close. What a cute little monkey. Who you calling Leto? <laughs> it's been too long since I've had prey that was worth hunting. But you're tired and wounded now. You won't last much longer. Right about now, my companion should be finishing off the part that you left outside. Is this companion of yours strong? Yes, he is. He isn't as strong as I am, though. <laughs> In that case, I don't need to worry. You see... We've been sparring partners a long time, and I've still never beaten him. Really? Wow. So Al's just got hands. Damn it. Yeah. Why can't you sit still for a second and let me cut you up, you big bucket of bolts? Why is he so skilled at that? Because he hasn't been able to practice alchemy. Maybe he just really worked on it. Yeah. <gasps> You're empty. <laughs> There's a bit of a story behind that. Would you like to hear? It's a pretty good yarn. You probably already know it, though. It all starts with a man by the name of Barry. Okay. 
Once upon a time, right here in Central, there was a butcher named Barry who loved his work. His favorite part was cutting up the meat into little tiny pieces. But one day, Barry found that cutting up beef and pork wasn't enough anymore. Yikes. So he took to the streets and began cutting up people instead, night after night. Oh. In time, of course, Barry was caught, but not before 23 victims had fallen prey to him and his knife. Naturally, after terrorizing Central for so long, Barry was sent to the gallows for his wicked deeds, and the world was happily rid of yet another evil man. At least, that's what everyone out there believes. But our story isn't over yet. We haven't even reached the good part. Barry isn't actually dead, you see. He's very much alive and charged with guarding a certain place, only without his body. Yes, that's right. He's standing in front of your very eyes. I am the infamous mm. serial killer, Barry the Chopper. Ah! That makes sense. Okay. Sorry, but... I've never heard of you. I'm from a little He's town crushed. in the east, so... Fine! But even if you don't know who I am, shouldn't you at least be a little scared? Shouldn't you be going, ah! Or what happened to your body? Or something! Ah! What happened to your body? <laughs> hey, now that's impolite. Oh, I see. You were on death row, too. You had me startled there. No way! I'm not a criminal! Huh? Then what happened to you? It's kind of a long story. It's weird to keep your my body, my worst people alive and infinitely in a suit of armor. Like to be like, oh, you've killed people in life. Now live eternally with weapons. Yeah. If the government's involved, I don't understand how they went. How do they control them? You know, my guess is the government or I, I feel like the government isn't involved. And whoever's running the factory is like, OK, I can either just kill you in general, which is the same thing that was going to happen because they were on death row. Mm -hmm. Or I can put your soul into this robot body and you still have to do what I say, because if you don't, I'll like report you because you're a criminal hmm. and you escaped death row. When I lost my body, my brother transmuted my soul and bonded it to this armor. Your brother? <laughs> of course, your brother. <laughs> What's so funny about it? <laughs> are you sure you and your brother are really related? Well, I guess we don't look that much alike anymore. No, no, no. That's not what I mean. Are you sure that you're not a puppet created and controlled by your so-called brother? <gasps> Were you ever even a real person to begin with? How can you ask something like that? What? I was a real boy and my name was Alphonse Elric. <laughs> How can you be so sure of that? I have memories. I remember who I was before. And who's to say those memories aren't made up? <gasps> oh. But Winry and Granny... Not existential me. attacks. So like TikTok too. comments when someone posts about being Silly mentally boy. ill. You oh. were never alive to begin with. It's as simple as that. Then how do you know that you were really alive? I was, trust me. This area's off limits. Don't move. Oh. <gasps> oh my there. god. Did you see that? There's nothing I love more than chopping up live people. Ew. I can't control <laughs> myself. I kill, therefore I am. As long as I know that, it's all I need to prove to myself that I've always been me. <laughs> Your brother is that good, is he? It's a weird argument because you know, Al is, is real. You so I can get around to taking care of him. Yeah, but if the whole thing is like, you're like a chopper or whatever. Mm. If your metal is kind of different. Well, no, what I more mean is Al has memories because him and Ed grew up together. Like, I feel like it's a very weird attack to get existential with him. Like, I wonder if Al's actually going to buy that or if it's going to make him think that. Oh, I don't think that's far-fetched at all. I think once you've been living a certain way for a really long time, it is so easy for someone to convince you that it's always been like that. Then I'll have to hurry up and defeat you so I can get around to taking care of him. <clears throat> Go out! Do it now! What? Oh, oh. genius. Wow. I'm dirty! <laughs> There's no such thing as dirty in a fight! <clears throat> that was pretty slick. What's the matter? You still haven't destroyed the blood seal I so kindly pointed out. You going to or not? There's something I need to ask you about. The Philosopher's Stone? Yes. Tell me everything you know about it. 
Sorry, cat. Hey now, tell me I did beat you at your own game. That's where you're wrong. I'm not beaten yet. Oh, jeez. Oh. Impossible. Oh, another one. Interesting. Oh. Full metal out. Bury the chopper. <laughs> I it's funny, I was literally thinking, what, can't the body just, like, flesh. move also, Describe independently? Really yeah. by a pair of brothers. Oh. An independent head and body? That's a dirty trick! They're two people. No, no. Weren't you the one who said this? Did you no hear such that? Thing as yeah. In a fight? Are you ready? Round two's about to begin, short stuff. Don't call me short! I don't think so! I'm not going to give you time to transmute! Damn, I've lost too much To blood. transmute. I'm starting mm -hmm. to feel dizzy. Yeah, he's been slow. Ah. He's getting hit a lot. Not good. Not good. Here he comes. Oh, this seems super bad. Yeah. Oh, he... Oh. He just used deconstruction. That was it. Okay. Oh. That hurt you him. Me of someone I don't like. No. And now I've done exactly what he did. Or maybe. Okay. What the fuck? He's wriggling, that freaky. Can this guy just Brother. not die? But that was smart. As as I hate to admit it, yeah. Lost. So you're not gonna tell me you're really three brothers, are you? <laughs> oh no. Come on, boy, you won. Hurry up and destroy us. No, I'm not a murderer. With bodies like these, are we really even people? Oh. I consider you people Hard whether to you say. have physical bodies or not. That's if rough because that it's exactly. out. My own brother is a person either. Come on, what's the matter, little puppet? I told you I'm not a puppet! You keep telling yourself that! But how can you know for sure? How can you be certain you were really alive? There is one way you can prove that you're not just a puppet made from scraps of armor. You've got a blood seal too, right? Destroy it! Go ahead, break it yourself! If you die, you were a real boy all along, just like you want to believe! No! There's no way I could ever do that! Oh no? Then I guess I'll have to do it for you, won't I? Oh. I know that my brother is a human being. That means you guys are human too. I will not take the life of another person. Huh. Yeah, so I don't think he's gonna be sacrificing to make this film. Yeah, exactly. My brother and I have been lying, stealing, cheating, and killing together for as long as we can remember. And now that we're in these pseudo-bodies, we'll be treated like humans for the first time. Don't you see the irony? For that boy, I'll give you a parting gift. I'll tell you everything. I'll tell you who made the Philosopher's Stone and orders oh, to God. No. Yes. I guess not. Lust. What? My, that was a close call. The hair is like. You, you oh no, that's not hair. Those are her fingers. What? Oh, what? Yeah. Well, well. Would you look at that? What's the full metal pipsqueak doing here? Such Wait, no what? We're not gonna talk about that. Talk about what? Yeah, no, she did that to kill Cornello. He walked in the room and she was like, "Hello, father," and this was like. Phew. Okay, I thought that was like a dramatization of her actually just like stabbing him in the eyes. I didn't no, realize she, it was like extended. an extendable finger yeah. situation. Of course. It's cool, right? Yeah, something like that. What? Sorry. Just a. Think. Of course, of course. Like, lust. come on, like for real. Why? I didn't think of it like that. How? Wow. My, that was a close call. <laughs> Number forty-eight. You should know better than oh, to talk no. about things that don't concern you. Well, well, would you look at that? What's the full metal pipsqueak doing here? You're too much. Mm -hmm. boy. How did you find out about this place? <laughs> oh. oh, brother, brother, brother! You oh my god. You're trying to kill one of our most important sacrifices. Do yeah. you understand me? You could have messed up the entire plan. What would we have done then? Huh? So what's the plan? So they keep saying that he's an important sacrifice. Yeah. We know that it's likely that the sacrifice thing is referencing the creation 
of a philosopher's stone. Mm -hmm. They haven't specified the amount of souls required to sacrifice to create a philosopher's stone. Mm -hmm. And they Mm -hmm. keep saying that he specifically is important to the philosopher's stone. If it was just like an abstract, like a soul is a soul kind of thing, I don't think he would be important. So I feel like that must mean that there's something about his soul specifically that would set his philosopher's stone apart or like make it or or yeah. there's there's something I, like weird about him specifically or he has a very strong soul or so he, he you only need one of him to make one whereas I, you need three of other people to make I, it like I there is something more significant about him what's the most significant thing about Ed he's a fantastic alchemist mm-hmm. here's yeah. another factor lust and gluttony were going after scar why would they take their time to go after scar who has scar been going after only state alchemists. Mm -hmm. So they probably are trying to sacrifice a lot of alchemists. Mm -hmm. Makes me think they're looking for strong alchemists because for some reason they count for more. Well. Tell me who you people are. What plan are you talking about? What do you mean when you say important sacrifice? Yeah. Oh my, the pipsqueak's raring to go. I think I made it angry. <laughs> Don't call me pipsqueak again. Then what would you prefer? A pipsqueak. <laughs> Whoa now. There's no need to fight here. Someone might get hurt, you know. This is a fight that you started. So come on! What? Uh, Whoa. Technical difficulties. His arm. No. Lucky me! Oh. My god. You're fortunate your arm's broken. If not for that, you wouldn't be getting off so easily. Oh, and they can't kill him. That's an interesting Listen dynamic. He well, knows boy. they can't kill him. Don't ever forget this. Always remember we I feel like we've seen that before. <laughs> but that's true. <laughs> we can't have him poking around this place again. It's too dangerous. It'll have to go. Blow it up. Wait, wait. All right. What was that? What was this? One Fitz another redemption. This is, has to be a big clue. Mm-hmm. Oh, those triangles. They have the triangles, uh, the symbols on the seven deadly sin people. They have a snake with the triangle in the middle. Mm-hmm. There's sun. Well, it looks like a jellyfish. Nope, that's a moon. Sun, moon, giving energy to a. It looks star. like water and fire. Do those look like three people in the middle? Yeah. Maybe it requires three. Okay. And that shape is the shape that he said was on the ground for when they were doing human transmutation. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what, ooh, ooh, here's what I'm seeing. Energy from that somehow. I don't know what those are. With three people in the middle, will create three new beings. And maybe that's how gluttony, lust, and envy were made. Interesting. All right. Because you don't just pan up to this for no reason. So they said they're going to blow up the whole place. So. Mm-hmm. You know, Al, there's something I've been wanting to tell you for a while. Yeah, what's... I guess I've been too afraid to say it. What was Ed about to tell me? He said he'd been too afraid to say it before. What could have frightened him that much? Are you sure you're not a puppet created by your so-called brother? Were you ever even a real person to begin with? What was What's he about? What's the matter, little boy? You got something on your mind? Shut up! You're wrong! Just accept it. You'll feel better! Uh-huh. <laughs> You're mine now, little puppet! What? Stay right there! Or the next one puts a hole in your head! Well, this isn't going quite is that gonna play. work? Not gonna do much. I hope they don't die. Well, the building's about to come down. Yep. They're gonna blow the whole thing up? Dang. I I don't know how anyone could be that possible. It could be that strong. I don't know how anybody could be that possible. Get away from there! I don't know how it's possible for someone to be that strong. Ed's in there! Hmm. I know what this means. Time to get out of here! (laughs) Okay. Hey, you! Get going if I were you! Oh no. Oh. And they got Ed. Oh. There you are! I brought a little present for you! Brother! So this gonna hand him back over? 
His life's not in danger, but he has lost a lot of blood, so you might want to get him to a hospital as soon as you can. Also, you really should keep a better eye on him, stop him from taking these crazy risks. He's a precious resource. But who are you? Lieutenant Ross, we need to go! Sergeant, help me with him! Uh, what happened to him? We'll talk later, and you should go too! What? He's gone. Well, there it goes. Oh. Well, get quiet. Calm down now. So they just let him go. Lovely sound. I know it well. That's the sound of a building exploding. Close as it is, I'd say it's coming from next door. Then there's the this laboratory. guy. It's such a you saw him in the first sound. episode, the crimson the way it reverberates alchemist. through your entire body. Mm -hmm. You keep it down in there, Kimberly. Oh, do yeah. excuse me. I was just recalling the Ishvalan War of Extermination, and it put me in such a good mood. Okay. Sorry, I gotta see one more thing. War of Extermination, and it... Moon. Moon. Put me in such a good mood. Kind of cool design. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. To get him later, is it a that was like surprisingly not, not complicated? Yeah. Whole, and so why would they not like take him captive and wait to sacrifice him? Yeah. Lots of questions. Or hold him oh. ransom, or do like yeah. literally anything. Literally, that is, I don't think I've ever seen a show just be like, here you go. Sorry. You can just have him back. I wish I was like you, Al. You've got such a big body now. It's not like I asked for this body, brother! Alright, well that is uh, Season 1, Episode 8 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. A very action-packed episode. A lot going on. I hope we continue to kind of flesh out the ex-prisoners as, like, metal bodies yeah. thing. Specifically that they are in, like, a shared situation with Al is going to be an interesting way that they kind of, like, have aligned interests in a way that they wouldn't before. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be odd to see and also how that's going to affect Al's sort of, exactly. like, perception moving forward. But make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below if you enjoyed that episode and are excited for episode 9 coming this Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't wait, want to watch that episode along with these, they're all posted to Patreon in their extended, uncut, ad-free forms right now. We have a lot to discuss, but before we do that, where are we headed? All right, let's go to the episode verdict. We may have a post credit scene. All right, post credits. So things here at Central are pretty hectic. The senior staff in charge of State Alchemist is shorthanded, thanks to Scar's killing spree. Oh. Rumor has it a promotion to Central for one Colonel Mustang isn't far off. Mm. Central, huh? Not bad at all. Watch yourself, though. You can't move up the ladder as young as you are without making enemies. I've been prepared for that from the start. Just a word of warning from someone who knows the game need as many people on your side as you can get your hands on now, Colonel. Which means... Get yourself a wife. <laughs> Seriously? I don't get it. He hung up on me just like that. Lieutenant Colonel, stop making so many personal phone calls, okay? Oh, so sorry. All right. All right. And that is... <laughs> thanks for that post credit scene. Glad we didn't I'm, miss that. I'm an amped now for the next episode. Holy shit. The Mustang wife arc. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you for watching. Now we're going to go to questions given to us by our amazing Patreon members. Uh, if you want to ask, join at any level and start asking. Let's go to question one. R. Lewis asks, Lust and Envy referred to Ed as an important resource. What do you think this could mean when they say this? And what do you think makes Ed a person of interest to them? All right. I think it's got to be a resource to sacrifice in order to create Philosopher's Stones. And I think he specifically is more valuable than someone else because of his heightened aptitude for alchemy mm. and to like his skill. Okay, I could see that. The other thing I'm thinking, and I don't know how they would know this is, but Al went through that God meeting God and then mm. through the truth spiral True. thing. I think that could maybe be why he's special. Okay. But um, also I think it, ha it which also in turn has to do with alchemy. So mm -hmm. I think it's because he has major alchemical abilities. All right, let's go to question two. All right, Cece asks, what do you think about the seeds of doubt planted in Al's mind about his humanity? How do you see this 
playing out in his relationship with his brother. Yeah, that's the thing. Those were pretty major seeds of doubt. Like they, mm -hmm. I mean, it really hits hard coming from somebody else who is in the same position because like the notion that these two were talking about themselves so assuredly. Oh yeah. And Al is in the exact situation. Like when he was like, how are you even sure you're real? Like yeah. I'm not real. Like to say that, it, like Al doesn't have much to argue with because they're the same. Exactly. So it, it makes, it's more automatically pushes you to a place where you're like, have I just been avoiding this? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's, I think a specific brand of terribleness in terms of being detrimental to Al's perception of himself. And I'm, I'm worried about what he's going to think moving forward. I think there's going to be grappling with that idea, but ultimately I think he'll realize like, no, I'm, I have all the memories. I, I am him, but I mean, you don't eat, you don't sleep for four years straight. Probably can be driven to think some crazy things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely going to be an ongoing problem. And I think even in situations where you know a thought is like unrealistic, you can have this sense of like, like, I, I know that I did this in the same way that, like, you know you put the cap back on your toothbrush. Mm -hmm. And I think in situations like that, it can get really hard because once you kind of start to think that way and start looking for signs, it kind of is just this, like, self-validating loop because everything you're looking at, you're thinking about yeah. in the context of, like, oh, I'm not a real person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your brother says something completely harmless and it comes across in a certain way because you're thinking about it through the lens of like they don't think I'm a real person. Mm. So I see that potentially being an issue in their relationship. Shane Gilroy asks, Ed's automail failed him due to a mistake by Winry. How do you think she will react knowing her failure caused harm to Ed? Man, I'm glad we saw that post credit scene. Had we not, we would have just been like, why Yeah, why did that happen? Mm -hmm. So I think initially, like obviously she's going to feel terrible that she made a mistake and that that mistake put Ed in danger. And I could see it I mean, it, like, it could totally be fine. It could be just like, oh, shit, like, I'll fix it. And then, you know, we'll double check that thing specifically mm -hmm. next time. But it could also be this, like, major source of self-doubt and just kind of become something that she can't let go of and keeps yeah. impacting her and affecting her moving forward. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, hopefully she comes out and, like, helps fix it or yeah. something. I know Ed's going to be really mad. I cannot wait to see that animated turn into, like, a cartoon he already is a cartoon well, anyway, but turn into a lesser drawn cartoon yeah um but uh it's gonna be interesting to see moving forward but uh that's where we're left for this episode thank you for watching drop a like and comment down below if you are enjoying this series and be on the lookout for our next episode coming this sunday at 12 p.m eastern standard time if you can't wait and want to watch that episode along with these they're all posted to the patreon linked in the description below right now i think that's about it are we excited for episode nine of full metal alchemist brotherhood can't wait all right let's get it let's go